Moments of silence are moments of grace. Take some time to be quiet. Learn to listen. Switch off to the noises of normal sounds. Plug in into other frequencies. The universe is always talking and not a day goes in silence. So I am not mad. I am not crazy. Cast out the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind all the spirits. I bind all the ancestral spirits. Bind all the spirits. Where did you hear that kind of a rubbish prayer in the Bible? Did you ever hear Jesus binding his ancestors? And binding his forefathers? And binding his own parents and family and genealogies? I bind, I bind, I bind. Binding them for what? So deal with your fears, deal with your demons, deal with your problems, deal with your challenges. Map up a path for yourself which you can walk and walk that path as your spirit is leading you. Hello Mzanzi, it's Agosub Gal. Joshua Maponga is training on social media after pictures of him living in caves and mountains trying to reconnect with his ancestors. According to Joshua Maponga, he's saying that just take time out of, you know, the busy lifestyle and just try and reconnect with nature because Mother Nature is always talking. So he is back and this is what he had to say for himself. At the end of the video, please do not forget to like, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so that when you ever upload any videos, you guys do not miss anything. Bye bye, Mzanti. Uh, whether you are in, uh, in, in the north, in the south, in uh, South Africa, Botswana, Angola, Senegal, Port Cote d'Ivoire, Gambia, Ghana, greetings on the face of the earth and to you, welcome one, welcome all, here on your afternoon drive, live with Maponga J, here on your afternoon channel, where we discuss African politics, African science, African medicine, African culture, African spirituality, you know, indigenous living, agriculture, and everything else between. The whole idea is for Africans to talk about their African problems and seek for those critical, critical African solutions. Yeah. So uh, I hear for the past uh, a week or two, I've been trending for all the right and all the wrong reasons. Yeah, it started off, I think, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Lesotho, where I had uh, gone there with my friends to, for some business, for some business meeting, which took us some few days. And after we finished our meetings in, uh, in Maseru, we decided to take a trip up into the uh, mountains and go and get some fresh water from the mountainside. Right on top of Maseru there, there's some fountains that are there at a beautiful falls, beautiful falls. So after doing our doing our uh, walk in the, in the in the pool there and in the falls, on our way up on the side of the mountains, there you know Lesotho has got lots of these beautiful uh, like limestone uh, stone that they used to make bricks, and the ancient soldiers uh, carved some caves sort of things or some. Uh, Halls, you may call them, but the mini caves in the mountains, and they would use them for for hiding or for protection during the nights and the cold season. But these these uh, these spaces are now being used by uh, by uh, shepherds who come up in the mountains here, and in the night they also uh, sleep in these uh, beautiful spaces. And when I got there and I saw one of those beautiful caves, having heard the history, I decided I'll get into one of those caves and take a small little nap, you know, and just uh, experience the, 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 the caves there. Yeah, true, my feet were dry. I don't have to explain, but my feet were dry. And I actually have a naturally uh, dry skin. I have a very, very dry skin. And I must actually soak it in fish oil or cooking oil. Uh, my wife the other day was suggesting I must put some plastic bags at night and then soak them in the night in some oil, then they can become softer and whatever. But yes, I have a naturally very 
dry skin, which is, uh, which is an African skin. So after walking in the water, and it even makes it worse. And uh, some people decided to focus in and zoom in into and stretch and uh, expand the picture and uh, look into my into my feet. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not by any chance offended. I've dealt with the demons of my dry skin in private. I'm not embarrassed when they are mentioned in public. It is what it is. I use lotion when I can and when I can't. Sometimes I forget and I, I don't feel bad about that at all. That's not an issue. And when I came back into Zimbabwe, we started off an, another journey which took us to uh, the men's cave in Mutare, which is what a mini men's conference. And while we were there, I then later on decided also, yes, I'm not embarrassed. Yes, that's my, that's my skin. That's my skin. My skin is dry, 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 dry. And that, that's the way it is. And uh, I put lotion, but once I touch water, it dries up again. And uh, literally, it looks like I must walk with some Vaseline. And for the sake of, uh, for the sake of those who cannot um, uh, tolerate uh, dry skin. And someone say, hey, hey, you, you, you need Vaseline, you need Vaseline. It's okay, it's all right. And when I went to Mutare, then we decided after the men's conference to go up into the mountains there and spend some time. Uh, spend a night and uh, drink from the fountains there, play some music in the springs, the natural springs, and uh, you know, take a nap in the, in the real cave, in the real cave. You know, lots, of, uh, lots of snakes up there and wild animals and stuff like that, but it, it is what it is. You, you go to certain spaces because you want to go there and something calls you to those spaces to go and see. But I'm not here to explain why, uh, why my skin and uh, why um, mountains. I want to talk about this issue of um, uh, social and cultural uh, reengineering, particularly for the for the African for the African child. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Jesmo. I'll buy lots of vaseline and fish oil. I'll buy uh, you know tissue oil. I'll buy uh, all the oils you can mention, and I'll put them on my skin. But immediately when I finish bathing, I must put them on again and again. It's lots of work. Too much administration. I, will, I do it when I can do it. And uh, uh, until now, you've seen my feet is dry. You never knew they were dry. So just, let's just leave it where it is. But I want us to talk about this issue of social reengineering. And I put up a poster this morning where I explained in a small way, but I want to get into depth this afternoon. Very, very, very deep conversation. Uh, the issue is when, when the Europeans and the Americans, the Chinese come to our countries, um, we tend to uh, look at their visits uh, with a commercial eye. Uh, they are doing tourism, they are visiting sites, they are studying, even when they visit some of the sacred spaces, they are allowed to take off their shoes and walk in our spaces and uh, some of them bring their candles to these sacred spaces, like Vic Flows. I've seen some candles there uh, in some of these uh, spaces. I found coins where these Europeans believe they can drop in their coins into the sacred pools to wish them good luck. If you get to Vic Falls towards the Zambian side there, there's a very interesting wall that is there. It's a chain, actually, like a mini chain. Uh, right at the falls where lovers come from around the world, they buy their key, they make their vows, and they make their commitments uh, at the Victoria Falls. After that, they lock the key onto the, onto the wire that is at the Victoria Falls there uh, as a sign of their commitment. I think I've seen about two or three of those spaces as I travel around the world. I can't just remember exactly where I've seen that. But there's one particular one I remember in Vic Falls. So they make these commitments of theirs uh, at the falls, then they lock their key. At the, at the wire there, there's a small, like, like mini wire. If you have been to Victoria Falls, you can confirm that. And as a commitment, and as a covenant, and they hope that after making these vows, they can, they can, their love can last forever. They also believe after throwing some coins in the water there, it's a sign of good luck and whatever it's supposed to be. And they do these rituals in our spaces, and we call these people uh, tourists. You know, they're tourists. They're bringing uh, cash flow, they're bringing foreign currency, they're bringing money into our, into our, 
into our economy. Ha! Jiki jiki. Let an African go to the river. He is going to collect the marine spirits. You know. Let an African go to the mountain. He is going to summon some demons and some spirits of the bush. Let an African do the very thing that the, the, the tourists are doing and is deemed as evil. I mean, you'd see me walking around with a tail like this. And no, 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 don't use that. This is, this is, this is demonic. This is for witch doctors. What must I do? You must go to the shops and you must buy some uh, mosquito uh, spray or go and buy some doom and then spray the, the air so that you can kill these insects and kill these, these flies. But in the ancient days, you'd make yourself something small as small as this. Then when flies come on your head and etc., you'd, you'd sweep them off. And I think sooner or later, we may want to start talking the difference between the occultic side of African culture and the practical side of African culture. This could be used when it is dipped in other chemicals and stuff like that as a way of chasing spirits and evil spirits. Yes, same instrument. But you can take the same instrument and use it purely for, for chasing away the flies around your head. And so what's, what is evil with taking a, a tail of an ox or a tail of a horse or a tail of a, of a, of a wild beast and ornament it nicely and then use it for chasing flies? Maybe it is for simply the purpose of chasing flies. Inasmuch as you may want to look at issues of circumcision, for example, for the Africans. No, this is our culture. This is our culture. Yes, it's our culture. It's also, like, fortunate enough, it's also biblical. And uh, if you get to places like uh, ancient times of Babylon and the Middle East, Middle East and the Middle Persians, they'd all just be umbrellas of papyrus that they would use for fanning, fanning the king. You know, make sure that he keeps cool. I bet you if I can pick one of those fans and I carry it on myself, someone may just find something else to say. And we understand that there are functional uses of our culture which have nothing to do with demons because they are practical in themselves. They are practical, they are real. When you're entering a forest, don't just get there and start harvesting herbs and taking as many herbs as you want. No, you don't do that. You take a piece of your hair, you bury it on the ground just to register your DNA on the ground. And whatever herb you are going to be harvesting, you may want to take a piece of it and take what you want and leave the rest there. If it is plantable or replantable, take some and then plant some more kind of thing. When you finish digging up your roots wherever you're working, try and cover up the, the roots that you have harvested. Don't expose those roots. It's a way of respecting nature itself and, and i think for us to demonize ourselves and put ourselves in a barbaric form it actually shows how deep the colonial process has played on our minds and i would like to give you an opportunity some of you and your friends who were writing horrible comments out there just remember you will die soon i may die before you you, you may die before me but sooner or later all of us will die and in this world now of AI and technology, uh, your children will be able very soon to access all your information, all your pictures, all your statements that you've ever posted on this social media. And they'll be able to consolidate them as a way maybe of comforting themselves to go through your journey and learn and listen to their father, to their mother, to their grandmother, to their cousin as they lived before them. Maybe they may find some information about their aunt, their grandmother, depending on what kind of information they are looking for. And I would like to warn some of you, the key things that you are writing here. Your, your, your children, your grandchildren, and your grand-grandchildren are going to come up and read some of this stuff that you are putting up here. And I bet you they will be embarrassed to be associated, to be associated with you. So don't just think for yourself and be angry. And you tap yourself mad. It's what a, hey, relax, relax. And then there's another group also that then gets up and says, Yeah, so tell us what's happening there. We, we want to know. We want you want to know is who? You want to know is who? Who 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 are you? Who are you that you want to know what is happening to me? You also 
walk your own path, walk your own journey, do your own discoveries, explore your own spirituality, work with your suspicions, work with your fears, work with your beliefs, work with your culture, work with your environment, collect information, and what you are comfortable to put to practice, put to practice. What you're not comfortable, then put it to practice and then leave. And as you travel along, you will find that there is lots to learn, lots to learn. And I think for me, the most important and the most difficult part is not learning actually, but to unlearn, to unlearn and begin to go back to some of the things that I used to demonize, I used to curse, I used to swear, I used to preach against, and etc. I was talking at these things. I was not talking with them. I was talking from across the river and just saying what I was told to say. And then some people come and say, so what did you believe all along when you were still a bishop? Are you telling us that you never believed in any of these things? I mean, I joined the ministry at the age of 16, uh, 15, 16. And uh, I started, I did my first degree when I was 19, my second degree when I was 20, 21. And uh, I had been to an Adventist school as early as 1982, 81, 82, 81, 82, 83, 84, 5, 6, 7, 6 actually, yes. And uh, I'd been in a Christian home from, from inception the third generation Adventist in my, in my homestead. And that is all that I knew. That's all that I knew. Lord, in the morning thou shalt hear me cry. Hear me pray, my voice ascending high. I attended as many Pathfinder camps as possible, as many youth camps as possible, as many camp meetings as possible, and conferences and conferences rallies and rallies, youth con convergences and stuff like that, to end up even working in there. And then went to study the same thing. And then I come out of the same thing. And I look back after all these years of doing the same things. And I say, is there something more out there that I need to learn before I die? Is there some experience out there that I need to understand before I die? Are there some people out there that I've undermined that I need to learn? Are there some practices out there that can add to my value and life that I could have missed in my life? I find it not evil at all, evil at all in my life to step back a little bit, retrace my steps, learn about the forests, learn about the herbs, learn about this whole thing of uh, demon possession, learn about this thing of ancestral worship, learn about this thing of African spirituality, you know, exorcism, you know, initiations, rites of passage, festivals and seasons, how to access sacred spaces, how to conduct this, how to conduct that, how to call for the rain, and how to... And, and, and it's, it's a, some of them are useful, some of them I don't find them useful, some of them are great sciences, some of them are quite bizarre, some of them are suspicious, some of them make your blood cringe. But typical, when a doctor goes training to be a doctor, what you don't know, some of you might know, when you are doing medical med medicine, medical doctor, I can't remember whether it's the first year or second year, they take you to the basement or they take you to the mortuary, and in the mortuary there, you are given your own cadaver, and they call it a cadaver, a human, human remains. You are given a full body. These are the people that have died in hospitals, and no one has come to claim them. So they spend so many months or so many weeks or years, I don't know, there are rules and regulations there. But whenever they feel these bodies have just been sitting around here for a long time, then they remove them from the, from the mortuary into the university. And in the university there, they have their own mortuary. They have their own mortuary. Ask any medical doctor friend of yours, they'll confirm what I'm saying. Then you are given this body. You name the body what you want to name it, and this body is going to become your center of study. So when they say we're going to be operating the stomach, you will be given a knife and then you cut the stomach, 
go there and pull out the, the organs that are there, put them in a plate here, and then examine them and examine them. We're going to be looking at the heart, you cut it there, put it here. We're going to be looking at the lungs, they cut it and put it there. We're going to be opening up the brains, you open up the brain, you look in there. They basically, you and this person told me that they could not eat meat. They could not eat meat, meat for more than two years. Because every day they would be going in there and they would be touching this dead body. Because you are training to be a doctor and you have to be trained on a physical human body. So that by the time you meet the living human body, at least you can identify with the dead body that you've been dealing with. This is how, this is how doctors are trained. In, 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 in typical, typical um, practices that some of us will not be able to tolerate at all. So it happens with all professions, whether you're a mechanic, breaking down cars and fixing them, whether you're in aerodynamics, whether you're in engineering, or whether you're in chemistry, whether you're in war, training how to shoot, how to walk and how to crawl on the ground. You start off by shooting you know, inanimate objects, shooting bags and shooting targets, and then after many months of training, then you start shooting at each other with uh, rubber bullets or empty bullets. Accidents happen, of course. And then uh, after some time, then they remove everything. Gloves off. It is a real gun with real bullets. And now, though you are not shooting at each other, but now you are playing, you're playing real military combat and etc. And then from there, you are taken into the b battlefront. It's true that some of the soldiers will die during training. Some of the doctors will quit during training. And so the practice happens around all professions. It's a pity that for many of us, we have become gospel workers. We read this one book and that's all we read. We don't visit other churches. We don't visit other congregations. We don't visit African spaces uh, where they are practicing indigenous stuff. And you don't do African culture at all. All you are focusing on is John 3, verse 16, and John 14, verse 1, and uh, Psalm 23, verse 1. And that's all you study. And straight from a classroom of constipation of theology, you are transported into a district where you must now start preaching what they have been telling you to preach. So what must I tell them? Tell them this, tell them that, tell them that, tell them that. And we come out of college and we come and we tell you this, we tell you that, you tell you that. Maponga, what are you saying? I'm saying what I heard at school. But how do you know that it is true? Because I read that it is true. How do you know that what you read is true and what you're saying is true? Because my teacher said it's true. Now how do you know that what teacher said is true? What you're saying is true and what is written is true? Because the church says it's true. No, but how do you know that the church is true? You, the school is true, you are true, and the book is true because there are other people who believe what I'm saying is true. Ultimately, Maponga, what do you believe? I believe what everybody else believes. I believe what the church believes. I believe what the teachers and colleges and universities believe. I believe what my teachers believe. I believe what is written here, and this has also become what I believe. So it is very possible to go through an academic institution and after the academic institution you simply get there to get your doubts quietened you know you ask a question you give an answer you ask a question you're given answers you ask a question you give i don't remember asking a question and being given an experience for example what happens when this and this is happening now do you deal with a person and they are demon possessed no this is what you do the rest of the stuff i found it when i was in the field of work when face to face now you must come we face to face with real life uh, in circumstances we, which were you were not prepared for. I was lucky, of course, having been brought up by preachers, so I had been able to see some of these things way early in the in my formative years of ministry. So you, you learn and you grow. And now that I am moving into African indigenous knowledge systems, African traditional belief systems, I A K A K S. African indigenous knowledge and uh, whatever you might want to call it, I, I don't mind. But in the midst of my, my, my learning, the question is, do I increase to the reading of books, which I have a huge, huge library? I can continue reading and just continue reading. 
And, and, and then they said, oh, yeah, I understand. That makes sense. Which, what book is that? The Chosen of the of the Caucasus. Oh, beautiful. What, what book is that? You know, that is the endeavor of my children. Well, what, what book is that? Oh, it is uh, how to civilize, how to Christianize a black man. You no, know, what book is that? No, that's a Jewish phenomenon. And you know what? Those are the works of uh, of uh, so and then that that's over there, and that is Ongo uh, over there, and that is uh, you know Doctor So and So and Doctor So and So. You put all these things together and just add to more understanding. Okay, I've read that. I've read that. I've read that. I can reference Plato. I can reference in Augustine. I can reference you know uh, you know all the Greeks and. Uh, the medieval professors and philosophers. So do I pursue? Do I continue uh, reading? Hoping that is the more I read, the more I will understand. Or do I stop reading a little bit and take off my shoes and go and experience and learn and be part of that which you are learning? Yes, even if it is if it is soccer, there is lots of practice. For Ronaldo, for Ronaldinho. Wopele and etc. You, you practice more than you play, but you must be prepared to turn up for practice and, and, and practice and practice and practice. Practice makes perfect when there is perfect practice. So I, I decided instead of just sitting around and reading and reading and reading some more, and some people come here and says, I have a book I must give you, you must read this book, you must read this book, you must read some more, you must read there, open the Bible, read there, read there. Hey Amen. I've read that book more than 18 times, 18 times. And I think one of the last times I actually read it backwards from Revelation coming up to Genesis. Not that I break myself from anything. Hey, you were reading the book, but you never came to know. You never came to meet the man Jesus. Hey, if you find him, please give him my address. And, 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 and let, me, let me talk to him also. I want to meet up with him. And I think I'm over, over that business of dealing with a God who hides in a book. A God who can't be experienced. A God who is waiting at the end of your life with a fork and judgment to throw you in hellfire and, and burn you. Yeah, and, and yeah. Then, and as I was doing the other interview with my other pastors from Zambia, yeah, God is angry. We, we need to appease him. We need to appease God. Said, Does God have anger issues? That he must be appeased. He must be, he must be appeased. He's supposed to be the creator who created the whole world, but he will take all the time as much as possible to rejoice in drinking and blood of the animals that he created and rejoice when those same animals are being burnt on the altar and oh in exodus the aroma of the sheep while it was burning it smelled like sweet aroma in his nostrils and i think we have created for ourselves as human beings a god who fits our fetishes who fits our suspicions who fits our our forms of thinking what we may call as an ultimate sacrifice I beg not to argue with many Christians, but, but for what it is worth, it, it must be noted that we cannot begin at this day and age be afraid of learning simply because the colonial system has made it so that you must just study and believe. And don't, there's nothing else. This, this is it. There's nothing more than this. Just give me Jesus and him crucified. And that's all I need to know. By the way, other people are happy in that space. They're happy with their Matthew 2 verse 52. They're happy with their Romans chapter 8. Nothing will separate us from the love of Jesus. Neither heights nor depth. Nor things that are, nor things that were. Nor things that are in the sky, things that are on the ground. No principles, no demons that can separate us. For in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who has loved us. For I am convinced that nothing will separate us. Beautiful passages. Others are happy just to receive that and say, I'm good. And if your, your mind allows you to be excited and happy and you are satisfied with that, there is nothing wrong. We are different. We have the Peter kind of a disciple. We have a Philip kind of a disciple. We also have a Thomas kind of a disciple. Who, when he is told that, hey, in fact, he has risen, he has risen. Thomas says, mm -mm, no one has ever died and resurrected. Hey, but we saw him. We saw him. We saw him. He's resurrected. He's Thomas says, it's okay, guys. No arguments. He's risen. I am cool. Uh, believe what you want to believe. 
I know what I know and I believe what I want to believe. And I want to believe that the Bible itself or the scriptures themselves, they have, or God himself, wherever he is, they have tolerance for the Thomas kind of a mindset. People who say, I, 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 don't, I don't want to believe what I don't know and I don't want to believe what I have not seen. So we hear in the passage there that actually one of the evenings, Yahuwah, Messiah, Yahshua, Jesus, whatever you want to call him, walked through the wall, not to come and see the disciples, but he purely came to meet up with Thomas. Thomas, bring your hand, put it in my hand. Boom, yeah, it came out with blood. Put your hand here, boom, came out with blood. Yeah, that's me, that's me. Do you believe now? Thomas falls on his face and says, now I believe. So what's wrong with, what's wrong with Peter telling Thomas that because you don't believe like Peter and John and James believe. Therefore, you are not a good disciple. Not for what it is worth for the story of Jesus. I'm using that as an illustration. So that when you have people who have a different mindset, different calibration, different set of brains, people who are not easily, yes, in the context of the Yeshua conspiracy, I'm using that as an illustration, uh, not for anything more than that. And for those who want to have faith because they've been told that this is how you have faith and you are happy with that, my guest, for those who say, what more is behind this belief and belief? Is there something else I can learn? Yes, there is room. To those who say, no, I'm tired of learning, I would love to experience my, 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 my belief. I want to experience my culture. I want to experience my faith. And uh, some have traveled to Nigeria, some have traveled to Ghana, some have traveled to Jerusalem and uh, put their heads on the crying wall, wailing wall. Some have traveled to Mecca and to touch the black stone. Some have traveled to, uh, to Vatican and go and kiss the Pope and kiss the toes of St. Peter uh, to experience whatever it is they want to experience. But I think if I should be looking at this from an African spirituality perspective, I don't need to go anywhere further than where I am. For what I'm looking for is not out there. What I'm looking for is right here within and right here around me. So it is my opportunity, it is my opportunity now that the bishop title is now hanging on the wall. I am not answering to anybody, somebody, for anything except myself and my family where it is convenient to do so. I have freedom from the devil. I have freedom from the white Jesus. I have freedom from plagiarized texts and their suspicious interpretation. Hey, here it means this. Here it means that. Here it means that. I have gone through all that and I am okay. I am now at a time in my life where I would want to experience and have an opportunity, number one, to learn me, learn myself, understand who I am. Number two, compare the knowledge that I have gathered with the reality that I am meeting. Number three, be able to frame for myself a new paradigm of thought and practice, which I might want to call my own mantras and my own dogma of this is what I now believe and this is what I have understood. And that journey, I don't need permission from any one of you. Not any one of you. I'm entitled to my experience. True that. The only problem is that I have exposed myself to say my situation is not me only. There could be another people, another family, another member, another community out there who are also battling with the same issues that I'm battling with. So while I am learning, I have made my life a public display, a public humiliation, a public theater, so that while I am learning, those who want to learn can learn also. Where I am failing, they can learn from it. Where I am succeeding, they may extend their efforts in making those things work. And perchance, there is something in my experience which would also work in your own experience. And this, for me, becomes a beautiful space where for the, one of the first times in the history of Christendom in the African space, 
you can have a professional bishop a professional minister well-trained gospel minister who has decided deliberately to revisit re-engage re-investigate the, all the suspicious traditional indigenous superstitions which have been locked away in the witchcraft box in the demonic box and i want to learn and find out is it really demonic that i should put a tombstone for my father or my grandfather is it demonic is it really demonic that i should send my boys for circumcision is it demonic that when i harvest when i harvest i must have a ceremony to celebrate the harvest is it demonic that when there is no rain i can walk up to a mountain there and do some prayers and solicit for the skies to open and rain falls is it demonic if i should eat a herb from the bush to treat my stomach ache to pick up some fruits and drop them in my eyes to fix the cataracts that are in my eye is it demonic that when women have delivered their children grandmothers can make them sit in dishes to clean up their wombs and to shrink their stomachs and stuff like that is it demonic that we can take honey mix it with the marijuana and what and use it for fixing our hair and mixing up and making up our dress is it demonic that when i get married in a traditional way my marriage is not recognized until i put on a white dress and i put on a ring on my finger is it demonic when i dream about my grandfather who passed away and he stands on my bed when i'm in johannesburg and he says to me what are you doing here and he takes me by the hand in the night to my farm in Zimbabwe and he walks with me on the farm and he shows me gold on the farm and he says dig here and two weeks later after that dream there is gold explosion on the farm people come and rip the farm apart the vision and the dream which I, is it demonic that i was preempted to an event that was going to be taking place in the future and the resources that are on the ground is it demonic when you dream someone pregnant when you dream someone having an accident when you dream someone making lots of money or have a vision about some paranormal events that are happening a problem with a colonized mind you only think in squares you only think in color you only think in straight lines and unfortunately you use a corrupted religious script and its interpretation as a basis of interpreting your reality all of you are looking at me here you all dream you all have visions you all have gifts some of which you cannot tell people about because if you open up your mouth they will call you names so you sit on it and be quiet and look very righteous and when others are laughing at maponga you also put k k k k k put on some smiley faces as if what i am doing and what is happening to me is not known to you you are an african and what i'm saying to you will cut through your heart and you must be ashamed of yourself to hate yourself as an african and laugh at a fellow african exploring the very same things that you are scared of not because they're not happening to you but you don't have the guts to face your fears and deal with the realities of your past so what do you do when you receive information from the spiritual realm number one go tell your pastor two call your friend three read your bible four find someone who can exorcise you and cast out the spirit in the mighty name of jesus i bind all the spirits i bind all the ancestral spirits bind all the spirits where did you hear that kind of a rubbish prayer in the bible did you ever hear jesus binding his ancestors and binding his forefathers and binding his own parents and family and genealogies i bind i bind i bind binding them for what so deal with your fears deal with your demons deal with your problems deal with your challenges map up a path for yourself which you can walk and walk that path as your spirit is leading you 
I will use the Bible often because many of you are still there. Even after baptism, the Bible then says, He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So you must understand also that even the Spirit does not only lead you to the bank. Hey, miracle money, miracle money. Does not lead you to a maternity ward. Hey, the gifts of the womb. The womb has opened, I have children. Does not lead you to the field. Hey, we have plenty harvest. And does not lead you to a business. Hey, we have made so much turnover and etc. The Spirit can lead you to the wilderness. The wilderness. Dry places. Jungles. Far from anybody else. I would not have time to say this, but I say it to you because you are laughing and scorning at me and you are using the Bible as the basis and yet you ignore Moses in the same Bible who was in the wilderness. You ignore Jacob in the same Bible who was in the wilderness. You ignore Elijah in the same Bible who was in the wilderness. You ignore John the Baptist who was in the wilderness. You ignore Yahshua who was in the wilderness. You ignore the woman of Revelation 12 who was in the wilderness? Moments of silence are moments of grace. Take some time to be quiet. Learn to listen. Switch off to the noises of normal sounds. Plug in into other frequencies. The universe is always talking and not a day goes in silence. So I am not mad. I am not crazy. I am organizing two other very important uh, visits to sacred sites. Uh, the other one will be here in Zimbabwe. I uh, will give you, please don't inbox me yet. Stay on the page in the next couple of weeks. I'll put a team together, identify the place, make sure it is safe. Bring your blanket, bring your sleeping bag, whatever it is. Bring whatever you bring for yourself, each man for himself. I want nothing from you. You want nothing from me. You can just walk with me when I go to those spaces. That's all. So it's, it's your problem. Bring your own water. Bring your own... Yeah, it's just do, do you. I'll be doing me also. So those who want to walk, can walk the spaces. And there is no problem. And I'm planning another one in South Africa. I think around the Inzala Yelanga. And uh, this must be uh, around September. I'll try and get the dates there. That one will be important. I think I'll take three days at Inzalo Yelanga where I would want all the African people who can make it to South Africa. All you need to do is to bring your drum with you, your bag, and your drum. Again, your small little sleeping bag, your dried fruits, your what, 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 what. Just a small little pack. Don't overeat. It will be nice to work and walk those spaces with a very light stomach and very easy, very easy and mobile and so that your senses and your space could be very clear. You cannot think clearly when your stomach is full of food and you're bepping. So lots of lots of dried fruits and fr few fresh fruits and water and etc. Just to keep you keep you going. But for those three days, I want those who are interested in the KwaZulu Mpumalanga one. We're going to get our drums for this year. We will make our way into Inzalo Elanga if we can be there from the. I think it must be the twenty. Is it 19, 20, 21 or 20, 21, 22? I'll confirm the date properly. And then those who want to go can go. I'm also making an announcement. I am coming to, to, um, I'm coming to Gambia before the end of the year. As, as I'm approaching Gambia, I want to get into the jungles of the Gambia. And I want to go and uh, visit the tribes there that are doing the Bwiti, the Bwiti ceremonies there. I want to go and learn about psycho, uh, psychosometric, or what, what they call it, uh, psychedelics and uh, uh, mental illnesses and community healing and how they're using that technology also for healing, you know, previous traumas and stuff like that. Beautiful signs I've been reading about it. And when I get to Gambia, I would want to have an experience around that. And before the end of the year also, I will be in Ghana. It will be very interesting when I get there to have that experience. And in uh, September, I think early September, I'm getting into Zambia for the So You Want to Be the Master Conference. And I will wish, uh, I will talk to Msonda in Zambia. If we have enough time, I would want to drive to the east. And there's some beautiful falls that are there. Or any other water body or mountain space that is nearby to Lusaka. And those who are there, we can take a day in. And go and see what's happening there. Spend some time in some sacred spaces. And then come out of that. 
and uh, I think uh, Thursday, Thursday tomorrow, I'm in Rustenburg. So on all my trips going forward, and I've been doing it, of course, without you knowing, I get to a place I work, but whenever I find time, I would sneak off and walk around and do stuff like that. But I'm thinking maybe while I'm in certain spaces, those who are, who are, who are nearby, break down those myths, break down those misunderstandings, walk across your fear, get to these places, experience these places, write your own conclusion. I will write my own conclusion. We, we, we can all be in the same space. We are not going to feel, we are not going to think the same thing. So I just came here to confirm that I am not mad at all. The white people, you call them tourists. The least you can do for me also is to call me a tourist. As I am learning, walking our sacred spaces and collecting critical information, downloading those critical files and improving my signals and listening skills and above all being able to rekindle my ancestral memory. Because I know that my blood knows slightly more than what my mind can remember. And getting into these places and spaces, it assists the human body spiritually to be able to plug in, log in, and download some critical files. Yeah, with those few words, I, I am happy to be here. I am very happy to be here. Uh, those who are talking can talk. Those who are laughing can laugh. Uh, those uh, uh, and uh, Petunia Zita, can I be wife number 10? Oh, no. That's a beautiful comment right there. Uh, I don't know about being a wife, but uh, you can start off by learning and uh, walking the spaces. Maybe you will find that which you are looking for. It's never too late to learn some new things. And uh, yes, I see you. I see you raising your hand. You want to become wife number 20. It's okay. We may not need to get to 20. So you have an opportunity to study. And don't just say you like someone and you like someone. No, it's not just. No, I mean, get to know the person. Get to understand them. Learn their ways. And their words will come to you. So please, cut and paste. Share this video far and wide. If this is what a madman looks like, then yes, Maponga is mad. But in the sanity of my brain and in the quietness of my mind, nothing has gone wrong. We are learning, we are growing, and we are experiencing, demystifying all the myths and the mischief that the colonial system has told us. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't carry that. You can't say that. You can't go there. You can't go there. You can't, you don't know, you can't, you, know, you can't, you, know, you can't what? You can't what? And it's time that Africans stop demonizing themselves, hating themselves, and allowing the neo-colonial narrative to become the only narrative. We have an opportunity, all of us, to write our own stories. And remember, colonialism is evil. It will make you hate yourself and love them. And immediately you love them. You are going to buy their food. You are going to dress their clothes. You are going to eat and marry their ways. You are going to build their style. You are going to work so hard. And after working so hard, you are going to take all your money and take it to the system that is destroying us. Hey, Mapunga, you're using a cell phone. You must throw away the cell phone. This is cotton all the way from Congo. Stolen minerals from Africa plus the technology of computers having been done by Africans. By no ways, when you are becoming pan-Africanist, does it mean that you must become backward, unlearned, untechnological, un un understanding, just go there and live in the bushes and eat snakes and eat rabbits and stuff like that. I think you are being naive and, and rather stupid, if I could say it in a more sense, sensible way. You are being stupid and foolish. I am educated. I am learning and I am exploring my own culture in the 21st century. And I'm not going back to the 21st, to the 19th, to the 16th century empty-handed. I am going back there with the technology and the knowledge that I have in 2024. I will visit 1972. I will visit 1549 as a person living in the 21st century. Which part of that don't you understand? Which part of that don't you understand? Yes, I'll take a cell phone with me. I'll have Wi-Fi with me. 
What must be recorded will be recorded if I'm allowed to record. And if God appears or the demon or the devil appears, I'll put him on camera also. It's not right that if, every time you look at your ancestral space, you look at it as barbaric and educated and tamed and knowledgeable, you know, it's all the, the neg negative things. You are the weakest link, you educated young people. Because you cannot take your understanding in the 21st century and visit your herbs in the past. Visit your fashion in the past. Visit your music in the past. Visit your birth controls in the past. Visit your medicines in the past. Visit your architecture in the past. You know, as, as a 21st century student, just walk back there. The accounting methods, the banking methods, the agricultural methods and strategies. How did they use to use pesticides if it was not this technology and that technology? So walk back as a professional in the 21st century and make your culture fashionable, fashionable. I think with those few words, I have said what I needed to say for today. If they say I am mad, maybe they are, they are right. If they say I am confused, maybe they are right. But they are also equally confused. We are all recovering addicts of Western education and Western religion. Social reengineering is your business. The change starts with me. The change starts with you. Say it after me. I am what you are waiting for. Say after me. You are what I am waiting for. I am what you are waiting for. I am what you have been waiting for. And you are what we have been waiting for. All Africans are backsliders to their own African culture. Have yourself a wonderful day. Don't do what I want to do. If you do it, do it better.